of the structure. If they were using that, the coal would become exhausted. You cannot clean the coal in the filter. It has to be removed and sent to a kiln furnace and reactivated. So they ain't going with nothing. Okay, so that, that did not happen. So I'm a little bit afraid because if the coal's been exhausted by that chemical, you can't just backwash it off. Now here's what I mean so that I'm very clear on the creative storytelling here is if they told you that the filter just became overwhelmed because of filtration, then that's not the creative story, that's the lie, because you can't filter this chemical out. It would not have filtered out. It would have gone right through the filter. Okay, so they can't have it both ways. Either it was granular activated carbon, which molecularly would absorb these carbon molecules, they would have stuck. But once they stick, they become exhausted and they're no longer usable, or it filters through and they backwash it off. And this chemical would have never stuck to the filter. It would never have filtered out. So they can't have it both ways. Yes, sir. I've got several different questions. Okay. He's got a lot, so we'll take the mic. No. Cooking, same thing. You can. In theory, you could boil the stuff out, but you're just boiling it into your air. Okay, let me, let me throw this concept at you because here's another thing that you should really ask um, the people in charge, what happened? Whether it was 1,000 gallons, 4,000 gallons, 5,000 gallons, or 40,000 gallons, I don't care. How much has been removed from our environment? Zero, except what's in our house. Okay, they're gonna have you flush it all to the wastewater treatment plant. The good news is the bacteria at the wastewater plant thinks this is candy, they're gonna eat it, that's a good place for it to go. Unless it just becomes overwhelmed. And at these levels, the wastewater treatment plant could be in, be in trouble, okay? From a couple of different perspectives, and I know there's some wastewater treatment plant and wastewater cost questions here tonight, but that's, that's a whole different area of science. Are they flushing the fire hydrants? to flush it out of the mains and the streets and stuff? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I've seen it in some parts of town and in other parts I haven't, and I didn't want to know I was crazy, so you're all telling me that they are. Where's that water go? In the Canal River. Right there. Back, right right Back into the river. Okay. Um, have you heard today that it is actually in? Yes, in Huntington. Huntington. And did you hear what the city of Cincinnati did? Yeah. They turned off their intake. Yeah. Well, imagine that. Yeah. Now, here's what's weird. Huntington turned it off finally too? See, I, I don't know. That's why this is your meeting. You guys are informing me. Cincinnati has the granular activated carbon filters, so they could have dealt with it and still chose to turn the water off. No. A fish tank at anthracite coal, which is what I think you have here, I don't think you have granular activated carbon here. I don't think you do. So that's why I think they gave you a creative story by telling you the filters just became overwhelmed. Because the, the anthracite coal filters would have never stopped this chemical in the first place. They would have done nothing. So all they did when they hit it with chlorine on the way in was they oxidized it into a handful of other chemicals I can't even say. First off, uh, what he asked about like you know, ingestion and inhalation and everything. Friday night we were out for a benefit show, music show and everything, standing outside and there was reporters from Time and you know, New York and everywhere else here just to see what was going on, see how the people were reacting to it. Couldn't believe that we were out having a good time and still living our lives. But you could smell it. It's in our river. It's going on into the Ohio River and so forth. Yes, it gets diluted as it goes, but it's still cool. And then it's not just here. You have the EPA who didn't do any testing or any uh, looking at this plant. We have we live in the Chemical Valley. Yes, not even coal, chemicals, everything. Dupont, Bayer, Dow, FMC, all of these companies, most right by the river. 
nobody's. I mean, I know, you know, you're a scientist and everything. It can take three weeks to actually look at all these different chemicals and everything. But if they get a pH balance spike or anything like that, and they're not activating this filtration system and this, that, and the other, and doing all these tests and everything else to figure out what exactly is in our water, it really doesn't make you feel safe at all. I mean, how, how can we stand up and fight for ourselves to get them to actually, yes, this place was exempt from inspection because they're a storage unit and they don't actually make the chemicals. You're, you're doing it right now. And what I mean by that is, you're all here. It's a cold, rainy night. You came out on about six hours notice because you're angry and you're concerned and you're confused. I'm gonna say this as a non-native of West Virginia. I'm sorry for what has happened to you, but thank you. And don't let the rest of the country forget. Yeah. What happened here, <laughs> Aaron and I have been talking about this since we first heard about it on uh, Friday morning. We woke up to it with a three hour time change on the west coast. Actually some friends of mine in Hawaii saw it because they were still up. Um, here is the quagmire to your question about all the chemical companies and the leaky tanks and the loopholes in the law that allowed them to go since 1991 for an inspection and all that kind of stuff. The federal government got a wake-up call in Charleston, West Virginia last Thursday. And here's the wake-up call, and, and it's been touched on in the newspapers, so I'm not fear-mongering or any of that crap. Aaron and I were talking when we got on the plane. And the headlines and the news articles and the tweets and the, the emails that Aaron received on Facebook said something along the lines of, if this had been Al-Qaeda, we'd have been at war. But because it was cold, we got away with it. Here's the really, 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 really scary part. And I'll probably get, you know, I'll, ever, I'll earn an FBI tail for this one. Um, the federal government can't have it both ways anymore. And it's because of what happened in Charleston, West Virginia. And what I mean by that is, is us in the water community, we used to say things like, a contamination by a terrorist group could never happen because it would take 10 rail cars of chemical to do any harm. Well, I suppose that 7,000 gallons have done an awful lot. Seven, four, one, five. Three, who will give me two? We are 48 in, in, in the state of West Virginia, especially in this valley, it could be a lot smaller than that with just a simple little explosive or whatever in any one of these plants, and you can take out a radius of everybody. Exactly. And the point is, is, okay, government, do you want to let them off the hook by saying they only dumped a thousand gallons? Well, then guess what it takes to pollute a community of 300,000 people? 1,000 gallons, I could do that with a dump truck. Or 5,500, 7,500. Guys, this is not an Al-Qaeda plot, just Claymer. I could go to a municipal auction. I could buy two street sweepers and take out half the population of the state of West Virginia with two street sweepers. Fill them up with whatever chemical. Heck, I could probably go over Freedom and buy some. <laughs> walk up to your river. I wouldn't even walk up to your river. Have any of you ever watched a street sweeper fill up? How do they do it? Fire hydrant. I just pull that street sweep and pull up the tetramethyl ethyl. Back low. Put it right in that fire hydrant. So now, because of you, and I apologize on behalf of the rest of the United States to Charleston, West Virginia, the government can't have it both ways and they're going to have to do something about this. And so you've had to suffer as the example, but if anything good comes out of it, it might be this. The other thing I wanted to say was, as being a part of us, I work.